Today on the Garage Engineer, we are going to uh, take our DR trimmer that we had a previous video of where we got it started. It had been sitting for about two years and got it running. Now I wanted to do some work in on one of our fields and it needs an oil change since I don't know how long this oil has been in here. So as we discussed in our last video, this is a, a replace. The DR trimmer is the original from the uh, mid 80s, but the uh, motor has been replaced with a uh, Briggs and Stratton 8 horsepower. The manufacturer states this takes a uh, weight of SAE 30 weight oil if it's 40 degrees or above. Um, if it's lower than that, it takes a 10W30. So this is Georgia. It's just now getting to the 40s, and I don't plan to use it when it gets uh, colder than 40. So we're just going to put SA30 back in here. And we got to get this bolt off for the oil. There you go. I'm sure it hasn't been taken off in a long time. Doing a little bit more research when I was trying to find the manual for this just to verify the oil. I saw on the plate that it has a manufacture date of 93. So this is pretty good, pretty pretty old. It's almost what is that? 30 years, 90. Yeah, almost 30 years old. It's 2021, so 28 years, and it's still running really well. But it had very little usage on it too. So all right, we got a bucket set up. It's a little overcast today. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so that's why I kind of wanted to get this in. Uh, at least changed. We'll see how much cutting we get. I let, let it run, as you saw in the beginning of the video, for about five minutes. And, of course, there's this bar that's in the way. Exactly right where we want the oil to come out, but that's all right. We'll clean it up. The instructions really didn't say how much oil we're going to need. But we will uh, we'll, we'll estimate. It really just says pour until it falls that falls that falls out of the fill. Uh, but I still like to know kind of how much we got. I'm gonna open the cap here. Flow out a little faster. There you go. Now most of it's drained out, so let's put the uh, drain plug back in here, and we'll give it a tighten. Now this is what they call their industrial motor, so it's just generically made, not specifically made for a particular uh, chassis or body. So they have a oil fill and drain on the front side. And they also have one on the back side because they don't know the application it's going to be used in. They don't know the application that it's going to be used in. So they give you access to both uh, sides of the motor to do the oil change. So what I'm going to do, this is easier access for me to fill it. Uh, it was better access to drain it on the other side, but we'll fill it from the back side here and then we'll check the level using the front uh, fill gauge too because you're just supposed to fill it up to the top so a long time ago I learned from an old timer that if you run out of bar and chain oil for your chainsaw you can use SA30 uh, oil as bar, bar and chain oil this is a uh, older motor requires uh, SW, uh, SAW, uh, SAE30 um, oil it says if you use it during the warmer weathers, it's good for it. If you use it during the colder weathers, it could cause pist piston uh, damage because it's too thick. And that's why they want you to use 10W30 because it's a little thinner. And then the reverse is if you use 10W30 during the summer, it's too thin and it'll cause wear also. So you just got to make sure what weight you use. Now, the mo er, newer motors are a little different, but specifically I looked that up for this one uh, just to make sure. So we've got our SAE30 oil. And just to prove that it can be used as bar and chain oil, this is good old Walmart brand, but uh, it says heavy duty bar and chain oil SA30. So really, I guess it's I, unless the other brands tweak the formula of the oil for the bar and chain to make it a little thicker, which they probably do, um, this is perfectly safe for your chainsaws. I think it takes about a quart, quart and a half. 
We'll just keep filling until we see it. Fill the other side. We're getting close just a little bit more. Alright, let's pull this oil out and see what we got here. So it's about a quart and a half, maybe two quarts of oil. You see it's black. I don't really see anything. The orange specks here are just paint that flaked off into it. I think it was just old sitting. Who knows how, when the last time it was changed. And it's just dirty. I don't really see too much, any bad stuff in there to be concerned about. So... I think we still got a good machine. Let's get it running again and uh, make sure everything's working properly. Before we get going, I see two grease points that uh, I want to put some grease in the axle and then the uh, shaft to lube that up um, before we get going. I don't think we did that last time, so let me get the uh, grease gun. So the next thing we're going to tackle before uh, we turn it on is we need to get the blade sharpened. It is quite rusty. I haven't figured out how I'm going to get counter leverage, leverage except I'm going to put that piece of wood there. I think that will help us. But I've got to get our half inch drive in here. Oh, sorry, we have to get our half inch drive in here and figure out what... There you go, that fits. That is inch and a quarter. So we'll get our uh, half inch breaker bar on there and we'll get to turning it. So we got our piece of wood here uh, blocking the blade. Let's see if this is turning the right direction. I think there's so much rust on there. We're going to give it a spray of penetrating oil and let it soak in for a little bit. But it's on there good. So we'll give it a little bit of our favorite Kroll oil. Kroll penetrating oil. We'll spray it down. It's gonna, I don't know how it's going to soak upward, but we'll let it soak. See if that helps. I think that that's rusted on, so we're going to try something besides the crawl. We we'll try a little heat and water and see what that does. See if we can heat it up. All right, now we just take some water and shock it. Probably when it get a little bit hotter. I think that smoke was from the coal. Alright. There you go. You see it's sizzling, we got it hot enough. Just trying to break some of that rust internally. I think it might need a longer bar. Let's see what I can get. We got a little bit longer bar. We'll give that a try. Nothing. I'm going to work on this for a little bit and uh, see if we get this nut off. I'll bring it back. It's coming off. 
So we just gotta get this whole thing off. Clean up the threads. Oh yeah. Then we can get the blade. I wonder if this blade's too short. No, that's about right. Yeah, this is rusty. Looks like it's never been off. It's got paint on the, the spline. Still, I don't think that's rust. I don't know why they would have painted it. And now that I think about it, I think I read somewhere that this was the original models were twist the opposite direction as normal lawnmowers. But now they've the newer ones they've changed. Now we're getting to the issue. This, the whole spline is moving. So I figure out how to stop that. So I guess the issue I have now that the the whole shaft is moving. So the only way to do it is somebody drilled a hole here. Is you got to hold the bolt that's down in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. See that bolt down there? We've got to hold that while we spin at the bottom there. So let me uh, have to get reset up here and see if we get the last little bit. But we're almost there. Okay, now our setup is we're just using this to hold the uh, spindle uh, still while we're loosening this. So we got to hold it opposite directions. I think this is a two-person job. Let me get my breaker bar here. I think, I don't know if you can see, that's been painted. Somebody painted, I don't think that's red, that's not red Loctite. We'll definitely put blue on it. But, that's paint. Why would they paint the shaft like that? That's crazy. Let's take a look closer here. Can you see the paint on here too? I mean, it's it was probably up here and it's got into threads, but that was part of the reason. And a little bit of, it was just tight. But we got it, it didn't beat us. Let me get a hammer, knock this thing down, get that blade off and we can start uh, sharpening it. go one blade get at our old little adjusting uh, removal tool that we made up in a previous video because I kept losing each each one of my grinders had a different size so we made an adjustable one out of an old wrench yes I know there's tricks to do it where you put it on the side but I thought it'd be fun to make Make an adjustable wrench, so there you go. You see the blade's pretty chewed up. We'll get that cleaned up. It's definitely been dull. The other side's not much better. We'll uh, clean that side up too, balance it, and we'll be good to go. It's not a bad blade, it just hasn't been cleaned up in a while. We'll fix that. I want to show you something else before we get started. I've got a bunch of old 18 volt uh, nickel cadmium uh, 
battery uh, DeWalt tools. Put that little adapter here. Here are my big old Makita drills. I've gone all Makita right now. I'm trying to go all Makita. So I got a converter so I can use the batteries on that because I've got more batteries of the, the my Makitas than I do of these 18 volt DeWalts. And it works great. All right, we're going to balance the blade right now, so we will... Install our fulcrum there. We're going to put our blade, and that will show us that this side is heavy. So we're going to have to take uh, some more off of this side. But let's turn it around just to see, make sure it's correct. And if that side falls, then that definitely, oh, that side's, a, it's a little heavy still. So we need to take more off that side and let, and leave this side alone. I like to make sure there's no paint or grease on the fulcrum point. Yeah, there you go. See, it looks just like before. That side's heavy. That side's heavy. We'll take more off of that end and uh, we'll test it again. So this was our heavy side. We just took some off. I'm gonna clean the clean it off to make sure we're in the center there. It's still a little tad heavy on this side. We'll flip it around and see what it says. Yeah, it's just a tad heavy on this side. We're getting there. Let's take off a little bit more. Still showing a tad heavy. Could have gone one more swipe. It's hard to find the center point there. Still showing it's heavy on that side. Let's turn it around here. I need to get one of those balancers. I mean, that's showing, now that's showing that side's heavy. It's just one of those things you just gotta, it's not an exact science, or if there is one, I need to know how to do it. It's showing it's a tad heavy still. But it's where, it depends on where you put it on the circle. It's pretty balanced. It's balancing. You probably could take off just a little bit more, maybe. Maybe I'll take one little bit off. It's a little heavy on this side, which is the same side. Let's take off just a little bit and see what happens. Still a little heavy. I think it's good for what we need it to do. We're not doing fine. It's not a finished turf cutting. It is, uh, it's, it's a brush cutter. Alright, let's get it back together. This collar, for some reason, it's loose here. Might be missing a screw. But that goes up there first. Then our blade. Then our washer here. Oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to clean. Let's clean that threads real quick, get some of that paint off. Alright, now we can get it on. Let's get the blade. Washer. Our 
the nut doesn't seem to want to go on. The threads might be dirty on the nut too. Let me clean up the nut threads too. Let's see what's going on with it. Alright, let's try that again. We get the blade, get the washer, and then we put the nut on the wrong way. Lefty tidy, righty loosey. Still a little gummed up, but we will make it work. Okay, now we gotta get the blade into position. It fell. So, we gotta loosen it just a tad. should be torqued to spec. It's good. Alright, let's get her back down on the ground. This is our temporary jet. We'll let the oil settle a little bit and then we'll give her a go. Turn the fuel back on. Attach the spark plug. Turn it on. Let's see if she's a flooded or not. hitting something, but the belt's about to break too. We're going to need a new belt. So yesterday it rained and we weren't able to do any cutting uh, because of the rain. And I, today's, uh, the following day is dried up. I knew running this we were going to possibly run into belt issues because the drive belt, well, I thought the drive belt was better than the actual blade belt, but as you can see we lost the drive belt here and it might have just popped off, but the, the blade belt has a V-cut in it somewhere. So we're definitely going to need a new one. Let me try to get the drive belt back on and we'll keep going but the whole reason I'm doing all this is this is other part of the property of the workshop if you let it go too long you get all these briars and I hate briars so bad they're annoying but we will uh, cut it gets a little bit better this is the entrance to the property and it had that tree uh, I cut down earlier so we could I'm trying to get it so we could drive up here the front of it has more briars we get farther up, it's more grass and pine trees and stuff like that. So let me see if we can get the drive belt back on and then we will uh, continue on. I'm going to try to do a field repair. I think the belt goes around this pulley here. But we're going to try to get it around the front. This is, I guess, a guide pulley. And then the front one is where it's connected to the shaft. Uh, you see right down, right there. Let's get it on front of there first and then we'll connect it here second. So let's come to the front. We got the guard in our way. 
Let's see what we can do here. Yeah, it's just a guide. The bigger one is just a guide pulley, I think. Let's see how that goes. Ah! Oh, you see these spiders? Look at that. That bad boy. They are all over in Georgia. They are huge. They are nasty. I don't know if they bite. Somebody says it stings a little bit. But their webs are crazy. They're like a golden color and they're strong. Stronger than even regular. So I don't know if you're squeamish about spiders. I'm not, but I don't like them. And there's our crack in the belt. So we're going to need a new belt for the soon. So I'm going to take care of him and then we'll get started on the back. Alright, so we got the belt on the drive motor. So this is loose. It probably just got knocked off because of a stick. And then uh, it, you pull it. And I think there's a guide right here. We got to go around. It needs to go over there. And then when you pull it tight is when it goes in motion. So we'll see how that works. I don't know if you saw all that. So here's the pull. You pull it. And it makes the, uh, it drives the chain over here to make the wheels go. So we had to go over that. I think that's just a guide pulley. And, uh, actually, that's, that's probably connected to the chain. Uh, this is just kind of a guide. And then you got a metal bar right there, I guess, to keep it in line. I don't see too much adjustment. We'll see how that goes. We're almost at the top of the hill. I did want to show this little pine sapling. That's probably, here's my hand, that's probably a good inch and a half diameter sapling. It took two tries as you saw to go over it, but it cut down, that's pretty good. I got a few more like that. But while we're taking a break, I did wanted to show, I think the original people when they purchased this property, they were going to build the house up here because there's a lot of grading here. It's cleared. Everywhere else still has grass. But you can see kind of where they dug out. Up here. But then when they started digging, I think they realized how much bedrock was here. And Georgia doesn't have, I mean we have granite and stone mountain, different things like that. But I've never seen so much huge rocks that I think that's what deterred them from building at least definitely not a basement I don't know if you could pour a slab or a partial I guess you do a partial crawl space um, or low crawl space to make up for it and it'd just be higher up but there is definitely it, it, you can't pour on the ground because it's just too much and even pouring footers would be difficult because you have uh, all that rock that you've got to dig down even though we don't have a very deep frost line, you still got to go at 18 inches, I think. So, I'll take you a walk around. Uh, it's really pretty. We haven't cut it in about two years, so it is a little overgrown, but that's the whole reason we got the DR, tr uh, DR trimmer, or not a trimmer, whatever, the DR brush, brush hog and um, field and brush. It's a DR field and brush. That's why we got that, so we could clear pathways, at least get to use the property up here. And hopefully we will find a damaged side-by-side -side, uh, or a gator that we can uh, fix up and then use it up here to uh, maybe build a shed or something. So uh, let's take a look around and see how things are going. He's got a lot of little saplings. Hasn't been cut in a while. Got all these rocks here. 
part of the Chattahoochee National Forest. And just all this. There's more briars down that way. But it, it's just got some good space to build on. I just got to keep it cut. And then you got this pile of rocks right here. It's kind of difficult. Uh, I don't know if they moved them over or if they, uh, that's just where they naturally fell. But it, it's hard to build a house, but I'd love to build a shed up here. Workshop or something. Keep the uh, garden supplies. But uh, let's cut, let's keep cutting a little bit more and we'll see how that goes. Well, this is the second time it's happened. The belts are jumping off, so I don't know if they're too long. I have to see what adjustments there are on this thing. Uh, they're probably just stretched and probably just need new ones. But I, I was trying to go see how long we can go without having to replace it because I know it's going to break. It's just when there, there's the uh, the crack in the belt. So I'm just waiting for that to break, and then when that falls off. The drive belt falls off because it's loose too. You just need to figure out the settings for it. So we'll put that there over the bar, around the outside pulley. The motor starts right up. I'm very here. Maybe we'll t we'll adjust the chain here now that it's. You know, let's get it down here. The motor starts right up. Here we can adjust it up here. Um, it, it, when it was cold, it did take a little bit of priming to get started. There's the adjustment for that one. Uh, but now every time that's warm, she starts right up on the first pull. So this is a great motor. Let, let's give it another try. I think we got a pretty good path going uh, up here so we can take nice walks. But I did want to show you one final thing. So the, I'll show you this one. We hit, I'd say that's about an uh, inch and three quarter diameter sapling. It took out with no problem. Just got to lift the front up a little bit. And that's about an inch sapling pine. Took out without a problem. So I'm pretty pleased. I haven't found anything yet that it can't take. It's just like doing a push lawnmower on your lawn. But this is just a little bigger. You got thick brush, trees, and it just eats it. So we'll make some adjustments. Look at that nice rock. That's pretty cool. I'll have to find a spot for that somewhere on the property. Thanks for coming on this journey today with uh, doing the maintenance and uh, cutting with our DR brush and field cutter if you liked uh, this video we do have another video where we uh, talk about when we first purchased that and did, got the first startup on the motor to see if it was any good uh, you know it's good but if you want to check that out to see uh, can we save it on there that was a great video and actually I'm wearing a shirt I don't have uh, merch yet but this video uh, this shirt is uh, for the video of the fair bell which is a little seven and a half foot dinghy we built out of two sheets of plywood some other scrap material and uh and then sealed it with epoxy and that was a very fun uh build and i can show you i'll put a link to that all in the uh, comment notes below um, and also we'll probably put a link up the top there remember the abc's of making always be creating till next time